Fine. I don't think I got email. All right. So uh, thanks everyone for coming. Um, I'm Chris because I've stolen this slide from one of my um, talks that I gave at some conference. It's my publication name, but it's really the theme the really. So I'm Chris, and I'm going to talk about ticks uh, today, uh, putting an end to hideous non um, vector graphics. Um, the talk is generally aimed at people who have started using LaTeX and are maybe interested to see whether, rather than using, say, GNU plot or external editors such as uh, Inkscape, um, it might be worth trying to do it natively in LaTeX instead. And I just want to go through uh, a couple of examples and, and considerations that you want, might want to make before starting to do that. So, um, we are not actually starting with ticks, we're starting with PGF, the Portable Graphics Format, which is basically the layer that sits below uh, ticks. Um, so you can really think of that being the, abs <laughs> being, being, being the abstraction um, that helps you, once you've described your diagram, PGF takes care of translating that into either uh, PostScript or PDF and also kind of works out the differences between the different compilation programs that LaTeX has. Uh, it also has some um, definitions for basic shapes and everything. Um, it has a very good math engine, well, oh, it's a very high precision, but the math engine, it, it gives some um, additional features as, uh, such as loops, recursion, and key variable maps that are quite useful when you just uh, define more complex macros. Um, by the way, when I say macros, I mean generally sort of uh, the LaTeX version of a function um, that that avoids you, uh, that helps you avoid writing repetitive uh, statements in LaTeX. Um, and PGF also has some data processing and graph plotting capabilities. So TIX, which is uh, was developed by some German university, stands for TIX is kind sighted program, which means TIX is not a drawing program, um, which I think it really is, but um, that's up to you. Um, and it's the front end for PGF. Um, so what we can do is we can uh, pretty much describe vector graphics in, in um, a more abstract form, so we don't have to say put a dot here, put a dot there, connect the two dots. Um, we, 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 can, we, we can rather describe, say, put a circle here, put some text in that circle, uh, and, and, and build a diagram that way, which, as, as, as most of you would probably agree, is, is, is probably a nicer way when, when, when you pr uh, produce diagram for any scientific work. Um, if you want to see some examples of what can be done with ticks, uh, these two web pages um, are your go-to sites. Um, especially Stack Exchange is invaluable if you ever get into that. If, if, if you know how to phrase the question, so once you've become familiar with the language of ticks, uh, you can literally Google um, whatever question you have, and, and there's probably someone who's already come up with a solution. Um, so the trick lies in actually understanding um, um, what TIX does and, and, and also knowing a bit about the jargon, the TIX jargon in general. But once you know that, you, you can pretty much uh, find solutions to anything on these websites. Um, TIX is not the only way um, to <coughs> draw uh, vector graphics in LaTeX. You can also use PS Tricks uh, or MetaPost. I have used PS Tricks in the past, I haven't used MetaPost. Um, I think the nice thing about TIX is it generally works for PDF and PS. Um, I'm not sure whether, whether PS Trix works with PDF LaTeX, for instance. It, it might now, uh, uh, but I think it didn't in the past. You would have so you would have to create a PostScript file and then have some external conversion way of converting that into a PDF. And I think no one's really using PostScript these days anymore, maybe printers, but. Most people are interested in PDF, so 
text is really um, the way to go forward if you're interested in um, producing vector graphics in LaTeX. Now, there's a lot of documentation, um, but it's confusing at the same time. So if you look at the manual, it starts off as it's a rather small library. Um, so now it takes us a library with, with thousands of extensions. Uh, not all of them make it into the distribution, but uh, quite a few do. And yeah, there are uh, 1,200 pages worth of documentation. Uh, sometimes that's really uh, your haystack if, if you look for something particular. So most of the time searching will get you to where you want to go quicker. Since these are examples, I apologize for the quality of, of some graphics. They are vector graphics, but because I didn't put an awful long lot of time into making them really pretty, they might look a bit bare. But it's just to show you the concepts of, of what can be done. Um, they also be, so, so when I say ticks, I mean t using ticks for generally plotting some, some sort of diagrams, such as state diagrams. Or, or, or anything sort of conceptual diagrams that you would expect to see uh, in scientific publications. Uh, but I'm also showing you how to do graph plotting and table plotting, uh, which is also quite useful. Um, after that, I will have a brief discussion of why you want, why you might want to use ticks as opposed to uh, other tools that that you could build into your workflow. Um, and I'm sort of discussing how you actually integrate ticks into a, a general paper writing workflow uh, to make sure that you use automation uh, as much as possible. Uh, and finally, there are, uh, I'll go through a couple of tips, tricks, and pitfalls uh, because getting started with ticks uh, isn't always the most intuitive thing. So. Let's get started. I've um, removed all the, the standard uh, preamble, such as uh, document class, begin document. So this is really sitting, well, use package ticks would be sitting before begin document, and use ticks library and all the rest would be sitting inside the begin document environment. Uh, and what you really say is, so you load the main library ticks, and there are a couple of extra libraries if you want certain type of shapes, certain type of arcs, or certain type of extra macros. Um, again, I would, I would refer you to example.net where all the standard packages have sort of a lot of examples, and, and you can actually see what these extra libraries can offer you in terms of functionality. Uh, once you've loaded all the libraries, what you can do is you can uh, define a text picture um, and simply draw away. You can nest these in figure environments, you can nest these in tables, you can nest them um, in, in anywhere. You can also just come up with um, and, and, and draw away in a line of text. So you don't, they, they work pretty much everywhere in your LaTeX document. And I think they also lies the power of uh, ticks because you can actually uh, draw or interface directly with the text that you're writing. So a very exciting example is the uh, red square. Um, and pretty much this is all the code you need to write it. What you do is you, you start the text picture environment and you just say at coordinates, text generally works with coordinates, so a coordinate system. You can define what units the coordinate system is in, but I'm not going into that now. And, 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 and all you're saying is start at 0, 0, and go to 1, 1, and, and make it a uh, rectangle. Yes? But the space is necessary, or is that a preference? Like, which spaces? Uh, red space, 0, 0 space, rectangle space. I think you, I think it would pass if you would make it uh, Without space. attached, okay. Um, yeah, cool. You'll find out. <laughs> you try it. Um, similarly, um, and, 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 and that maybe is sort of the first indication as to why you would want to use ticks as opposed to importing graphics from somewhere else. Since I write this in LaTeX, 
I can already use a reference. So what I've done on the previous page, I've added a label. Do people know what labels are? Yeah. So I've added a label on the last page, and now I'm just referencing this inside the figure, and it is actually something that brings me back. So, what happened here? There we are. Um, and obviously, that, that's something very useful. For instance, if you have sort of a number of theorems that you want to visualize for someone to see how they relate to each other, you can do that in LaTeX. And you can, you can just reference them, connect them with errors to show sort of a progression of how you tackle the problems. You can do that with algorithms. You can also, in conceptual diagrams, maybe have a conceptual diagram of actor, server environment, network, and refer to individual chapters. Um, in, in, in your publication as, and um, every time you change the structure of your uh, document when you recompile the LaTeX figure it will automatically update whereas if you were to hard code this in, in, in a, in a um, image file that say you, you were to produce an Inkscape then you would have to manually go back and uh, update say the page number where something is or um, the uh, section number so Referencing is definitely uh, useful, and as you can see, it's very easy to uh, do this in TIG. So, excuse me. Yeah. In Inkscape, you can embed LaTeX. You can? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's um, an upgrade done maybe two years ago. Okay. And it works pretty well. Okay, I don't know. It, it also depends then how it, how it export things. That, that might be the case now. Okay. So I don't know if you can do this kind of things, but I think I think so. Yes. So if you need, for example, the same policy, right? In in uh, in Inkscape, you can use uh, LaTeX embedded LaTeX for for the same policy for the paper, for example, things like that. So maybe maybe also, right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I knew that LaTeX can uh, that that Inkscape can export. Um, to, to a tech file, for instance, which would in effect be ticks. Um, there might be also other ways. I, I, I didn't know. When I started making the decision, I, I wasn't aware that that sort of thing was possible. But, but thanks. So yes, it, it, it is possible. Uh, it is possible whether, um, uh, but 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 in general, whether you do it in in Inkscape or in LaTeX, you, you can see that that it, it makes a lot more sense than having something hard coded. Um, can you actually see this? Mm -hmm. okay. Um, we can also do more uh, involved diagrams. So here we describe a number of um, so-called nodes. Nodes are the basic drawing blocks of sort of labeled uh, shapes in ticks. And what would happen is we, we create the um, argument um, node in the bottom here. Uh, we then create the opposition and the op uh, innovation, and then in here we create a uh, joint node. Now this is all done with absolute coordinates. What alternatively we could also space uh, um, have uh, relative spacing between them. So we could say we um, place argument uh, at some point in the graph, and then uh, place opposition relative to the right. Um, and innovation somewhere in the middle between the two and then this dot between the two. I didn't show this in this diagram but this is also generally possible. So you don't always have to go with absolute coordinate system when you, when, when you create your graphics. Yeah. How does it work for uh, outer separation and inner separation? Do you know what is what? It basically comes to um, Because I, th I think they're related to the center of the, the node, and and uh, sometimes it's quite tricky to have so that the text is not overlapping and your nodes are correctly set apart. So how do you do? Um, I know they use them here. I mean, I mean, one is all. I must, I must only admit, I would have to look it up, and it's it's sometimes one of these things where where text gets fiddly. As Usually, I would say, so 95% of the cases, it, 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 it 
aligns things correctly and you don't have to fiddle with it. And these sort of parameters are just there uh, in case you want to uh, play with it a bit. Um, sometimes it has an effect of where uh, also anchors are placed, um, sort of where things are centered, um, these sort of things. Um, I must admit I just copied this example um, from a text sample, so I didn't um, look at it in a, in the alter set here. But I remember having used it in the past, and precisely for the kind of reason where maybe I wanted uh, a, a label here, um, saying this is my new connection, and depending on how much space I want between the line and the new, I, I might need, for instance, uh, in an outer separation. Um, to, to adjust it. Well, I can answer specifically for this example because uh, inner set is like the, the space between the text, the actual character, and the, and the border of the box. And outer set is the, like, the space between like, the border and, and outside where you can, you can like, put other stuff. Does, does it affect anchors also? I don't think they do because the center doesn't really get changed. It's just the way how it looks mostly. For no, no, anchor, yeah. Anyway, it could be an anchor, not in the center. That's anchor dot north. I think yeah. it's the difference between like margin and padding if you use HTML. Okay, does that make sense? I don't think the diagram would look much different if we were to remove those. Um, and sort of something I, I didn't talk about is obviously when, when you go towards uh, Beamer, your actual presentation, you can also immediately uh, use Beamer notation and animate. So basically, since this is the first slide, um, these three items are not being shown. Um, so only these are being rendered, the four different uh, nodes. If I progress one slide, what happens is we start drawing this particular uh, connection from argument to the middle. And we also say that on the second slide, it's going to be colored red. On the third slide, third slide we start connecting the dot and opposition. And no surprise, on the fourth slide, um, the final arrow is being drawn. So interestingly, I noticed that a bit later, here my uh, coloring function doesn't override. So I'm sure you can also override it. Um, but in this case, it didn't. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if we can ask to this to automatically render the graph. I mean, here we're giving uh, absolute position, right? Yes. That's that, uh, 10.10 and 13, yes. 0, 12. To, right? Yeah. So that could be something annoying to write by hand. So can we ask to fix to do it to render this image automatically? To, yeah. To post, I mean, yeah. So here's the important thing is the topology of the picture is not really the position of the thing. Sure, sure. Very sure. often is that that is the case. Uh, uh, absolutely. I mean, as, as, uh, so, sorry for that. That was me just copying an example from the internet. Uh, I would I wouldn't actually write it like that. I would create uh, the argument node. Uh, may position it at zero, zero, or, or, or elsewhere, it doesn't really matter where you position the first node. But you can then say that instead of argument B at, you can simply say uh, write off argument A. And it would place okay. it next to argument A. And then you can, for instance, um, say um, argument C sort of right above uh, argument uh, the argument node, and that would give you a similar um, look. And what you can then do is you can define what the general spacing is. So that's how I usually draw things. But thanks for the question. Yes, uh, and you would do that. So it's just a, as an example what you can do. Um, you can also, as I said, the, the nice thing about LaTeX is if I have got um, a, a document I want to sort of enrich. Um, say an equation to sort of show my, my, my work either in a, in a talk like this or also if, if I feel you know my equation is, 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 is very big and I would like to sort of pull out a couple of elements sort of in a visually appealing way um, then I can do this so what happens here is 
um, when I write my equation, I place sort of little nodes, invisible nodes here um, at, at various places. And then I can basically uh, just say, remember these nodes. And once I've written out the equation, Tix knows where these invisible um, points sit. And I can just draw a picture between them, um, which is then overlaid onto the equation. Um, so these sort of things are really useful when you want to tear apart uh, um, the process algebra, uh, logical uh, formula, or, or, or a longer equation that can really make it much more visually appealing. Uh, for those who uh, find that you know a lot of things can also be automated, you can also use uh, loops and recursion in. Uh, tick. So when you draw, you can actually start programming. Uh, you can have conditional statements. Um, and I, I think in general, uh, LaTeX is uh, Turing complete, so you can do whatever. Uh, it doesn't always come intuitively, but for instance, in this example, uh, it's, it, it's quite nice. We um, basically go through this for loop, and every time, for every value, we draw the shape on top of the existing shape, um, which would look something like that if we were to step through it. Um, I've reduced the number of steps to not make, uh, before it was 16 steps, not 8 steps. So it's a slight difference, but again, you can see how uh, uh, Tix is, is drawing this diagram in the starts. Uh, with x being set to 1, uh, it then uses its math engine to send density to x times 20, uh, and it then draws a triangle for the particular value of density. And uh, since this is beamer, I can again say, oh, only always uncover the next, uh, only uncover the next triangle. Uh, in slide one, two, three, four, five. So the, the fourth triangle gets uncovered in the fourth slide, and so on and so forth. Right, so that, that sort of basic drawing you can do. Uh, you can use nodes, uh, which you can position absolutely also relatively. You can draw errors between nodes. Uh, various other things. You can use loops when you have a lot of sort of, if you want to, a graph with n uh, nodes, and you want to say, oh, I want to connect them in some sort of algorithmic way. And you later decide you don't want the graph with four nodes, but five nodes, you don't have to throw away all your work and draw all the connections by hand. You can also program uh, sort of connections between uh, nodes. Yes. So is it possible to have like nicer looking arrows or boxes or so? Because these yes. are a bit basic. And just yes, you can you can have whatever you want. You can also every ticks picture can be included as a ticks picture. So you can sort of define whatever beautiful graphics you have, and then make it a default for everything else. And is that included in ticks as well, or is that do you need to ex import external? No, you can. And you can import ticks, you can import PDF, uh, PDF files, you can also have um, sort of SVG figures where uh, you can import SVG figures where you just have sort of coordinate drawings, scalable coordinate drawings. Uh, you, you can do whatever. Um, yeah, it's infinitely nestable in that sense. And so you can reuse a lot of things you have done. And what you do in, in sort of practice is you, you start, when, when you start getting into ticks, you start building sort of your your own sort of macro library, oh, I like this kind of look, I, I, I write this style. Uh, next time you, you will probably just use it, and, 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 and you might have my fancy arrow style, or my, my uh, super blue color, or something like that. And so, so yeah. my question was, if I, if I want to have nicer boxes, are they already part of ticks, or do I need to import them from something style? Oh, sorry. Um, the answer is probably yes to both. There, there are some options, some very easy options to make them look nicer. There will also be some packages in the distribution and uh, sort of freely available on the internet or, or exchanges where people have bothered looking into that. Um, so yeah, um, there, there's plenty of uh, material out there to get you started. So from 
sort of basic drawing, I, 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 I now sort of take a little detour uh, towards um, graph plotting and uh, tables, which I think are possibly even more important for most people. Um, who, who is currently using LaTeX to plot graphs and tables? Everyone else is using Blueplot? <laughs> oh, that's a yes. No, no, no. What, what are people using for, for plots? Matplotlib, yeah. which is a Python um, MATLAB type thing. What does it spit out? PDFs and stuff. So, so uh, I can't. Again, there might be a way to do that also through some sort of PD, PDF magic. But in general, if, if I change my font in my LaTeX document and all my diagrams have been defined in PDF plots, uh, it'll just cascade. I just have to re-render all the diagrams, that's it. Um, also, I, I can use the, the sort of general special characters. I've had that, I think, in the past where I used canoe plot, and I was looking for this one character in my legend, and it had some horrible sort of code that I couldn't find in, in LaTeX. It was fairly straightforward to define. So that's why I think the, the, the power of, of drawing diagrams in LaTeX comes from. Just I can, I can sort of use the same notation. Be rest assured that I can define color schemes um, that work for my tables, for my plots, and uh, also for my graphs. So, let's see. Right. Can everyone read that? No. No. I can't. Command press. Command press. Command press. Command press. Command press. Command press. Plus. Ah. I hope I can undo this later. Um. <laughs> Is that all right? So, I'll just render it and then i show you how I did it. So in, in, in this example, I just wanted to show sort of, you know, you have a couple of diagrams, say, in your paper, and, and, and you, you, you generally, you have the data, but you want to separate really the data from, from the style that, that you're going to display the table in. Um, whether it's aesthetically pleasing or not, I'll leave to you. Um, but as you can see, they are all having the, the same sort of format, so they do look alike. So the way I did this in this, oh, I can't show it. So, um, so in order to do that, I first started by defining sort of a global color. Um, I then sort of defined something about how I, rep how I will represent numbers in tables, so I can make sure that you know they all have uh, the same number of uh, decimal places, and I can also sort of decide how I'm placing the thousand separator. If you're writing for uh, an English-speaking country, you'll take a comma. If you go to Central Europe, you might be using a dot. So these are sort of the, the nice things. If, if, if you also change your presentation for an audience, if that was something uh, you know, problematic, people wouldn't understand it for, uh, for any reason or, or another piece of um, implementation, I can just change it, re-render, uh, and, and I know it'll cascade, and I don't have to worry having missed this sort of representation anyway. Um, I then decide um, that every head row, head row is this one, has a double line. So this is sort of something I define for every um, for every plot. Uh, and, and similar, um, the sort of stripiness um, I can define to be the same uh, globally for all my plots. Uh, and if I were to change it, uh, say to something else, then I get this. Which color you prefer, I'll leave to you, but in general you can see that, you know, this is the kind of thing, if, if you have it all sort of at the, at the top, you know, no matter who you're writing a paper with, you can immediately change it without resorting to a lot of work. Yes. You're, you're importing a TIGZ that you're not using in touch. Hmm? 
I don't know. Well, you, could, you, you, you could just remove the, the line 6? Yes. Well spotted. Yes, so right, right. Because I'm not using ticks, but uh, PGF plots. And specifically what I'm doing is, uh, I first read data, so... So the, B the BGF plots here is, is just the column, right? Because the table we can do it in pilot, in pilot, right? Ah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to that in a second. Can make it some right. Can you still read it? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll scale up again. I'll find the combination. Can you read this? Yeah. yeah. So for the first diagram, um, this is how it looks in the table. This is how it's defined in uh, the file. And what I've done is I have started by uh, reading this file uh, into the data variable. Um, I then decide um, that I want to sort of um, header uh, a multi-column at, at the top. So I decide to have these span multiple lines as a sort of um, header for, for various dates. Um, and, and subsequently, I, I, I decide how all the data should be interpreted. So in this case, I'm saying um, discard may um, should be named as column may because I've already set discarded up here. Um, and I also want to um, add percentage sign. So I didn't actually add that to the data. I'm, I'm saying in post, read this data in and show the percentage sign. If you feel you want to give it in, in decimals, what you could do, you could just uh, take the cell content, divide by 100, and truncate at an arbitrary uh, precision. So again, the, you, you can see sort of that, that the uh, display style is, is really nicely separated from the actual data. And if you were to uh, update this file, you can just re-render and you don't really have to worry about you know, how it's going to be presented because you know okay, it's going to look the same way. So even if you have some last minute frantic changes, it's five minutes to the deadline of the conference, you can rest assured that if the right data file is in and you regenerate all the figures, yeah, it will be all right. Um, yes? It doesn't your analysis for it, though. Well, you might have to change your analysis, yes, if the data changes significantly. Um, <laughs> I, I'm commenting this one out just to show you another thing you can do. Um, so I was talking about math and uh, sort of fitting around things. Why does it? So sorry, it's obviously not nicely structured. Let me just. So what I've done here is, you cannot actually see it because of the monitor, but I've actually set um, all the docs area uh, columns, sort of rows that have less than uh, 130 uh, bike stations should be colored, uh, uh, should be made bold. So if you actually look into on the paper, these would be colored bold. And um, the way I've done it is just by by saying, look through this column and any value that is below 150, uh, make a bold font. Um, and you can see, um, if, if, if you come up with more elaborate macros, you, you can do an awful lot. And again, you just have your data, you plug it in, and the table renders the way you want, um, even if you change it. So it, it's again nice, you don't have to, to, to manually sort of fiddle around with how to uh, display certain things in the table uh, and then 
at the last moment forget that you changed the value and it should no longer be bold. Uh, but it is because you didn't change it in the actual uh, uh, LaTeX file. For instance, if you were to define uh, a table uh, with the data, uh, which is something I've seen quite a lot in, in LaTeX files, where people just build small tables and sort of merge data and start together. So that's one example. Um, yes. Is it possible to use it with, say, Tabula, where you have LaTeX inside inside the as the content? Yes, you can put whatever. This is Tabula in essence. Right. Right. Um, you can you can put again. Um, you can. But put if you have you already have a tabular table, can you use that like on top of, of existing tabular LaTeX code to start it up, or do you have to put all data separately? Um, you probably have to separate it. Yes. Right. So if you have a very complex table, you might have to sort of separate uh, style from uh, data nicely before you can read the benefit. It's <laughs> painful. <laughs> Well, that's why you want to get it right the first time. Um, so similarly, uh, we can do the same thing with figures. So I'll show you a very e simple file. So maybe we ran an experiment, and these are probabilities. Yeah. Then um, again, we don't need ticks. Oh, we do. So here, for instance, what, what we saw before is uh, we were just drawing the table uh, in its own environment. We could have also Maybe put... Maybe scale up a little bit more. Sorry? May you scale up a little bit more. Oh, sure. Sure. Um, But we could have also put the same table into a ticks diagram, put it in a node, draw a nice arrow to another table. So again, we, we can take ticks pictures, put them into different ticks pictures. Um, draw errors between them and, 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 and go wild. Um, here it's a very simple graph. It takes this data, uh, creates an X, axis label, a Y axis label, defines some min and max. You can also let them uh, be auto determined. Um, and then we say we, we add a graph or we add a, a line and, and we just tell LaTeX where, where to find uh, the data. We can also again um, do mathematical operations. We can say um, uh, load x and times it by 2. Um, that, that can also be done. Um, and if we have a, a data file where we don't have just two columns but multiple ones, um, there are also options in the table command that allows us to, to choose which columns we actually want to display uh, as x and y. So if we render that, and that's where I must apologize, it's not a very pretty diagram. Um, At least it's PGF. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, it's plotting just the data points. And, um, again, we can use uh, the math fonts for labeling, labeling axes. Uh, we can also draw uh, um, uh, we can also give the, the graph a title um, and, and add other features that you'd usually see. Uh, Where did you ask it? Legend to... Legends, for instance. Yeah. Where did you ask it to rescale the probabilities? Uh, I didn't. Oh. Oh, it didn't. Haha. <laughs> uh -huh. That's that's. Uh. Okay. <laughs> you can also choose. I can also. Uh, I need to look it up how to do it, but you can also say uh, uh, show it as decimal points rather than in this rather yeah, hideous notation. So as, as I didn't, the, the, these figures I, 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 I uh, didn't really. Um, I just wanted to show conceptually that again you can nicely separate data from layout and whatever graph you've ever seen you'll be able to recreate it in LaTeX and there are plenty of examples out there how you do it, how you move the legend around, how you have different line styles. Yeah, for instance,
Yeah. So I can also make a dash. Um, I can define them globally again and, and use them from my document to get sort of a homogeneous look. Um, so that's, that's as far as sort of figures, tables, and pictures go. One last thing that I find uh, really useful um, is uh, text externalization. Has anyone used this feature in this room? What does it mean? What, 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 the, what the tech in got a different file, tech file in your text? Well, that, you can obviously, um, a lot of you will have used uh, input or in, yeah. input to, to sort of uh, have one main document and then add chapters or whatever. Uh, but what happens is every time you put in the chapter, uh, LaTeX will sort of expand the whole thing and, 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 and pass and render the entire thing. Um, if you have, say, uh, your PhD thesis with 50 graphics, a lot of them are based on, say, um, data like this. Uh, yeah. Plenty of data points. Uh, each of them might, depending on, on what you're actually drawing, take a couple of seconds to render. Yeah, if you want to do that every time you change sort of a typo and then do PDF latex and then get everything to re render, you, you'll sooner just be really frustrated and stop using it altogether. So what, what, what you can do instead and bear with me for one second because I need to look up no. oh shit I'll be fine uh, ah. um, so Again, I, I haven't changed much compared to, to the way we, 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 we were drawing other diagrams before. So again, we have. Uh, so again, we were uh, we're starting with our import. Yeah. Um, but then I add these two. Uh, one says externals. The other one says text externalized figures. Uh, the figures relates to the main document, the figures of text, uh, and. What, what this allows me to do now, if instead of PDF latex, uh, I execute the following, uh, the minus minus shell escape figures. You can see it took a bit of time, um, and you can, you can, I've actually got diagrams which take about two minutes to render. Uh, especially 3D plots, uh, they take a lot of time. Um, and, and, and what we see is, uh, as, as before, we get this well, rather unspectacular uh, document with, with the graph that we were hoping to see. Um, but we also um, get this um, scatter plot um, uh, PDF file. So we, this file has been created twice. Once was as a as a separate file, and then as part of the the, the main PDF. And if I now do. If I delete this, so it was rendered really quickly. If I remove this, oh, doesn't like that. But, but in general, if 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 if, if you um, if, if you were to render it by on, on its own, so if I if I actually do. So you see it takes a lot longer because it can't use the file that it already has generated. And now multiply that, say, by, by 30 figures that you have in a longer document, you're going to go mental if for every typo you spend you know, five minutes uh, recompiling the document. Uh, so, so this really allows you to, to sort of say, once I've got my figure, render it, and the next time just, just include it from, from the pre-rendered file. Uh, so I, I would say that's probably the most useful uh, thing that comes with ticks because without it you can't really use the program uh, in, in for, for, for thesis or, or, or longer journal article. Right. Any questions? Yes. The, the way I did this was uh, using the standalone um, uh, class and then including in the, the actual article a PDF of the image. Right. So it's like 
manually doing what this thing is doing automatically. Yeah, I'm coming to how you can actually do that even more clever uh, in a minute. Uh, but externalization is really nice um, because you can automate a lot. Yes. Are all these examples going to be online somewhere? <laughs> I can, I can uh, zip them and <laughs> I, I do apologize. I put them together rather quickly, so I didn't put a lot of effort into them, but I'll, I'll, I'll put them online. Yeah. Yeah. You find that the journals where you have to submit your LaTeX code support all these features or do you have to include, end up you know, fighting with getting them to work on you? I mean, I've struggled with PGF. Um, so, uh, okay, I'll, I'll take this forward then. So what I do for my thesis, I've got... Um, Presumably you can wrap it in a conditional. If I have shell escape, then use externalize, otherwise don't. You've got it. <laughs> so what I would do is, so if I clean everything, I delete all the figures I've already produced, and it takes a long time <laughs> to uh, compile. I think Anton, Anton Stefanek, uh, he has written a lot of these things. I think it took him 20 minutes to compile his pieces. Maybe even longer. Um, my last paper took three minutes to compile, three or four minutes. Um, so this is creating all the graphics I've created so far. It's not an awful lot. Um, I should never press my key. Right. But if I now touch. So let's look how long the second one takes. Still a lot quicker than, than the first one. Uh, if I just do a single PDF LaTeX, it would LaTeX it would be even quicker. Uh, so. And, and, and what it has done in the background, it, I, I, I've got a generator folder where all the uh, uh, graphic files are being put as PDFs. And as you say, you can have conditional. One is run, and, and that's what I do with my make script. First I say run it with shell escape and look for any uh, file in a, in, a, in a particular folder, uh, make them tick uh, external figures. And then the second uh, run, I just say, do a PDF LaTeX, and um, the PDF LaTeX will, will know where to look for the generated figures and not bother externalizing them. And that's nicely sort of links to your question. So what you can do for the final paper, because the publisher will use PDF LaTeX, presumably, or mm -hmm. PS Tricks, whatever, what, what, what you just do is you, you just uh, ship um, your macros and everything. Yeah. Um, with the pre-generated figures, so when right. PDF LaTeX is hit, nothing has to be regenerated, it's already there, uh, and you're not doing anyone's head in, and, and you can rest assured that it, it, it'll look nice. Now, obviously, if they change the font, that might be a problem, but again, may, maybe even data for that. Um, well, they can just put up with it taking five minutes. They're changing the font. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 guess, I guess they did. The, it, since, since they always give you the, the, the standard templates, they, they probably stick with that. So. Now, my point was, it wouldn't, so I can get it to compile on their computer with PGF plots commands inside my... Mm. The general reason, reason for this is that um, they have, they've had issues with embedded fonts in PDF plots in the past, and um, they prefer to, if they have the source, to be able to regenerate themselves when mm. they can. This might actually raise an issue of yours. If you're shipping them, compile compiled PDFs that don't match their standards, then yeah, the embedded images may be, the but embedded may, may have issues with their processes. Sure. But you can decide. I mean, ultimately, if you were to, to ship this, um, it would have all the logic in, but depending which command you you, you use, um, it, would, it would generate. And yeah, you, so some people, I, I use make for it because I generally know uh, what I want to do. There are also some, some, some frameworks around this, uh, rubber LaTeX, I think. LaTeX and I use LaTeX. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's basically run, say, with shell escape, um, run Biber or, or BibTech, and, and, and then done, do another few compilations up until all the referencing and everything 
uh, is, is done because often you have to repeat PDF LaTeX because first time round um, it generates PDF but it won't find all the um, BibTeX hasn't been run so after the first run you then have to run BibTeX and then in the second run it will pick up the internal references as well as the um, because uh, you can't do this intelligent, you just run it X number of times. What do you guess? Ah. Yeah, okay. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm going to try it much. Ah, X number of times. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's, that's really powerful and I'd say this is probably the nicest feature about it. So again, I do make clean, I, I update my data files, I get, I get everything with the new data, everything is displayed the way I want it before. Uh, and that, that is really where I think the power lies. If you start using sort of new plot, you can also sort of start setting up things. You could have new plot descriptions, uh, which also re-render, uh, but then you also need to include the GNU plot rendering as part of your uh, make file. And whereas if I have it all in my LaTeX documented, it's sort of all part of the one macro and I can just standardize it. Uh, I guess it's, it's sort of a matter of what school you're coming from. Uh, but I think it's quite nice if it's all native. So uh, to wrap up, uh, why would I use it? Everything becomes native LaTeX. Uh, I can do homogeneous layouts, font colors, line styles. Um, I can do cross-referencing, as you pointed out, uh, there might be other ways, uh, I wasn't aware of them. Uh, I can do math in pictures, which is nice. Uh, I can compose things together. Um, I think program LaTeX is fun. Mm -hmm. Maybe not always. Um, alternatives are GNUplot, Inkscape, there are various other tools you might want to look into. Okay. Huh? Sorry? Ah, yes, you're right. Um, and I was talking about integrating it into your workflow. I'd say the most useful thing is the uh, externalization, which with a, with a make file or, or some other clever means, you can, you can actually set up to, to do almost all the work for you. Um, and, and what you really want to achieve is separate content and presentation style, reduce manual work, and, and also have a level of version control. Again, I don't know what what, what Inkscape file look like, uh, uh, Inkscape files look like. Uh, but obviously, if I change the TIX file and it doesn't and, and check it in and it doesn't do what I had before anymore, I can I can just do a, a text compare and, and, and uh, I will understand immediately what it is I change. Um, so that's quite useful. Um, General recommendation, if, if we have sort of a lot of definitions of how graphs should look like, ship them into a preamble.style file and just uh, load this file um, like you would with any other tech uh, chapter or whatever. You can just load it as part of the preamble in, in the main um, thesis or, or main paper style. That's right, paper file. Um, you also want to define notation and repeating keywords. Again, this is probably something useful using LaTeX over, say, GNUplot. If, if, if you have sort of a particular symbol for a particular method, and you want to draw a series of graphs, then in, in, in ticks, I can just use the command, which always gives me the same symbol, and it will always show up in the legend. If I then decide to change that symbol for whatever reason, this is a one-line change, uh, whereas if I have GNUplot, then I need to change it. I either have to have some means of, of also having this logic of um, macros in GNU plot, or I have to change everything in GNU plot file. Um, there, there might be a way to do it also better in GNU plot, but it, it's again a sort of nice thing that, that always works uh, in LaTeX. Um, and yeah, make, make PDF plots, figures, and tables, read files, don't hard code your data uh, if possible. Um, you can do a certain amount of math, conditional, highlighting, and macros and styles. Um, so often, you know, you just want to dump a log of, say, a computer program you've run, simulation or, or some calculation, and you could then just pick up the log in LaTeX, uh, parse it, and, and, and display it. 
So every time you've, you've got a new log, you can just put into LaTeX, render it immediately, and inspect it, uh, which can also help when you're doing research uh, if you have a nice software representation uh, for your data. So you don't need to, to, to recreate the representation during the analysis phase, and when you, when you actually do the writing, you can do it at the same time. Um, use rubber or make, uh, just, just to save yourself a little uh, bit of pain for large do in larger documents. Um, and if you have to do some extra work, such as uh, extract some, some more complicated data from a, from a large log or whatever, uh, use Python or some other uh, scripting language and embed that into your rubber or, or make or tick, uh, later make um, procedure. And to uh, a last couple of uh, slides, yeah, uh, Google's your friend, unlike sort of with many Excel or Microsoft Word problems, if you know the language of ticks, uh, you will actually get a lot of help out there. Um, it might involve a bit of searching, but I've, I've never really encountered a problem where I didn't find uh, at least a sort of um, a step so towards the solution I was looking for. Um, so there's a lot out there, especially in tech.stackexchange.com, and that's really useful. Um, global sites and preamble, um, and yeah, something I should have probably done, not only for my uh, general paper files, but also for my um, uh, Beamer files and my uh, posters. Obviously, you can also do Beamer posters with LaTeX. Uh, have a sort of skeleton, sort of an archetype uh, project that you just copy every time you start something new, uh, and, and, and that you keep up to date, um, so that next time you start your all the macros that you uh, wrote the last time you you sort of work with later. That's really useful. Um, externalization can really speed up um, your uh, compilation time if you have large graphs or a lot of graphs. Um, and it saves you a lot of frustration if you, if you externalize. Uh, and it might also help when you actually ship things to um, the uh, editor. Finally, if you hit ticks really hard, you will eventually run out of memory. This is not a joke. Uh, this can actually happen quite easily. Um, so even with externalization, what LaTeX does, it goes for the entire document and sort of tries to get an overview over all the graphics that are in the entire file and, and tries to sort of render them and see if there are any links between them. So essentially you'll be rendering everything at once and everything is in memory at some point. Um, so what I actually do in my make file, and that might be uh, going a bit too far, but might be sort of interesting for those uh, who are really sort of into the sort of things. I basically go through the uh, I go through my LaTeX files and I comment out all the figures and then render one figure at a time. And I do that for every figure file I find. Uh, and that saves a lot of memory and, and actually proof because, because you only ever um, so of course, Malaitic will only ever consider one externalization at a time. Um, it, does, it, it, it prevents you from doing things such as um, referencing another, pic, uh, uh, another figure on a certain page, because that can only be done, obviously, once you know the size of all the, the pictures in the entire document. But there are workarounds around that, and I generally find uh, I don't need that. Um, Um, the other way is you can increase memory. Um, there's a later configuration, so if you have a smaller document and it's just sort of that you've run out of a few hundred megabyte of memory, you can always increase it. But I think up to two gigabyte of memory. Um, but you really want some smart externalization mechanism using make, rubber, or later. Uh, and finally, sort of one of the annoying bits. Uh, often you see ticks key or PGF key not found. Uh, and what it usually means is you're miss a missing a use package or a use ticks library sort of um, declaration um, check out where you got the example from 
uh, whether you're using some kind of feature that requires an library import, or if you're a member of this department, you'll find that your LaTeX distribution is probably a couple of years out of date, and you want to upgrade to at least uh, LiveTech 2012, uh, which is what support. Sort of most things, most examples I've seen on the internet are supported by this distribution. Uh, if you get a later one, perfect. But if you have anything uh, older than that, uh, don't be surprised when things don't compile. Uh, also, something to take into consideration if you work with other people, sort of get a new latex, distri latex distribution. It's really not that hard to install. So, thanks for your time. I'll stay around a bit if you have other questions.